This podcast includes adult language and graphic depictions of murders and criminal acts. This is a comedy-style true crime podcast. We do our best not to make fun of victims or victims' families. However, we do introduce our sense of humor while telling graphic stories. If the mix of comedy and true crime is not your thing, this may not be the right podcast for you. Audience discretion is advised. In the late 1980s and early 90s, numerous backpackers started disappearing while hitchhiking in Australia. Police began making gruesome discoveries, and one survivor became a hero who would help crack the case. We'll talk about that story, and we'll play the wheel of death with a lucky contestant on this episode of Two Murder Morons. It's the worst one yet, I think. But what made us start doing that? I don't I don't know. It just became a thing. I don't know. Just I don't remember how we even started. I don't know. It's kind of fun though. Yeah, it is. It's kind of become our thing. It is. I don't <laughs> well, you're hello. Little, you were a little slow on that bonus. I, I was. We just did a bonus and I was not with it. Nope. Well, hello and welcome to Two Murder Morons. My name is Andy. Sitting across from me, as always, is my good buddy Mike. Hey. And welcome to the show. Oh, show. If this is your first time joining us, welcome. If you are returning, welcome. Welcome back. Yeah. Uh, first off, we got to thank our executive producers. Exactly. Yep. You people are wonderful. Um, there are Buy Me a Coffee members. If you're interested in getting your name on the screen and other exclusive benefits like bonus episodes. You think I could um, become um, one of those? I think you already are. I am? Because oh. I know I am. Okay. You know, we can support ourselves kind of thing. That's true. Oh, I do get the emails. You're yeah, right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, but anyway, uh, head to buymeacoffee.com slash two murder morons um, or click the QR code on your screen to find out more. There you go. Yeah. Simple, simple. <laughs> simple. Um, we also have to give a special thank you to a Buy Me a Coffee member, oh, Matt. Matt. From Australia. He's like our new best friend, dude. Yeah. Can you believe we got somebody from Australia? Like, how awesome is that? It's awesome. It's a, and he is like, dude, he is on it. Like, I mean, we've, I mean, we're thousands of miles away. We got somebody that actually likes our show. I know, right? Yeah. And it's crazy that it's like eight o'clock at night here. And I think there it's like, Eight or nine in the morning. Yeah. Supposedly he listens to us while he while he works. Yeah. And he's like, sounds like super fan. Like yeah, exactly. I think he's he just found us a couple of weeks ago. Yeah. And he uh I think has probably listened to every episode because he's pretty much commented on every yeah. episode. It's like a diamond in the rough. Yeah. Like, he's like a diamond that appeared out of nowhere. Right. <laughs> <laughs> well, the reason the whole reason we're doing this episode is he suggested it. Yeah. Because we always say, like, hey, if you if, got an idea. Yeah, you got an idea for an episode, let us know in the comments. And he did just that. Yep. And, it's, and we're uh, doing it. And we're doing it. It's a story out of Australia. The I, I already said it we're Australia. Yep. Matt or anybody else from Australia, I apologize in advance. As I read the story, there are a ton of names and names of places, and I know I'm gonna do terrible at the pronunciation. It's all right, it happens. So I've, hey, I've been terrible. Yeah. So just get ready for the comments because I'm sure Matt will be on there. And be like, probably, "Oh, you uh, don't say it like that." Yeah, probably. <laughs> yeah, it's a Vegemite sandwich, dude. You don't, you don't say it Vegemite. Vegemite. Yeah, or whatever. Well, you know, yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, I don't know what the hell a Vegemite he, sandwich is. I feel like he's already cringing. Uh, real quick, before we get into the story, oh. though, got a little disclaimer. Here if, we go. If you <laughs> if you are listening to the show right now, uh, just know that we are also a video podcast. And we're going to be talking about pictures and stuff. So if you're listening and you're like, why are these asshats talking about photographs? It's because it's a video podcast. Yeah, so no shit. Check. <laughs> so check us out on YouTube or Spotify. You can watch episodes there. But if you do prefer to listen, we're on all the major podcast platforms. We do have sexy voices. So we understand. We Right. I know. I love listening Such to us. Soothing voices. Are, are they? <laughs> Makes you want to go to sleep. <laughs> Your face with that voice is really what's doing it for people. I, I, I think. know it is. Uh, also, right now is a good time to like, subscribe, click the notification bell so you get notified of new episodes. That's right. Please help us out. We just crossed 500. I'm so pumped. I'm pumped about that. About having 500 subscribers. Oh, and also, if you're on Spotify, go oh. and give us uh, five stars. Yeah, leave a review. Yeah, leave a review. You can say you hate us, but just give us five stars. <laughs> Whatever. I don't care. I don't <laughs> care really. Just give me five stars. Bunch of five star reviews that are like worst. Show, show I've ever, ever listened yeah. to. Five stars. Five stars. We we rate it. Right. At least we feel we do. This is also the last opportunity we have to remind everybody that next week, 
Not next, next, not next week. No, this for this episode that's airing. Oh it's yeah, gonna, yeah, yeah, it's yeah, next yeah. week. That's right. Yeah. So if you're watching this next Wednesday, next Wednesday. September 18th, 7 p.m. Same time and place. Live, season two finale. Live, live. You nervous, ask buddy? Us, ask us, yes, ask, ask questions away. We'll yeah. answer. And uh, we don't want to give away yet the topic of the nope, episode. I'll give it away. But we're doing something a little different that should light some fire to like so. get get a conversation going with the viewers. Like we'll yeah. need some suggestions and stuff. So or you can ask us questions about whatever. Yeah. Ask Other us, shows. Ask us about what, what? My shoe sizes. Whatever you Wait, want. You can comment whatever while yeah, you're watching. Whatever. We'll be live. We'll be responding to viewer comments. And we are going to be playing the wheel of death. Yes. Not once, not twice. twice. But three, three times, times a lady with viewers who are viewing the live. That's right. So the only way to get to play next week on the finale is to be in the chat as we're doing the show. And you'll get, and we'll just do like a random pick. But if you're only the three people watching us, yeah. you'll, you'll get to, all, all three of you get to play. <laughs> all of you get to play. Yeah. yeah. There you go. If we only have one person watching live, you can play that, three times. Uh, is that what we're going That's with? That's what we're going with. Okay. We, we said three times. We committed to playing three times. So That's right. So no matter what, if nobody's watching. You get to play three times? We could go between me and you. Yeah. And Jack. And we'll Jack. let Jack have a chance. Yeah, we'll let Jack have a chance at winning that. Even though he was an asshat when he did that show that one day. We do have a pet hoodie in our merch shop with yeah. our faces all over it. There you go. He'll maybe finally get one. Maybe you get one. There we go. Yeah. So he didn't get a bow tie on his last haircut. I know. I'm kind of upset about that. Bandana. He didn't get a bow tie and he got sprayed with gray mall perfume. Yep. Damn it. Oh, Jack, you all right, buddy? He's passed he's out passed asleep. Out asleep. You don't know yeah. what he's doing down there. Yeah. I haven't heard him at all. Usually he'd be like. Yeah. Usually he's digging a hole. Yeah. In the carpet for some yeah. reason. He's out. Out like a light. <laughs> all right. What do you think? Should we give this going? Get her gone. Oh, shit. Oh, you just messed it up. Get her done dead. <laughs> there it is. There it is. That's one for the board. All right. So up until the mid 1990s, hitchhiking in Australia was viewed as an adventurous and inexpensive activity. Kind of like here in the United States in the six, like the 60s, 70s. That was a big thing. Like hitchhiking was kind of a big, that's yeah. how people got around, you yeah. know? Yeah. People were willing to pick people up. Yeah. I mean, people viewed it as a completely safe means a travel. of travel. Yeah. yeah. And yeah. Phil serial killers came around. <laughs> <laughs> and, then, and then, oh shit. Yeah. Uh, however, unsolved Australian missing person cases such as that of Trudy Adams, 1978, Tony Jones in 1982, Naoka Anda in 1987 and Anna Rosa Leva in 1991 led those who were still hitchhiking to begin to travel in pairs for safety. That's probably smart. Probably a smart, smart idea. Smart idea. Yeah. Yeah. Um, in the late 80s, early 90s, several backpackers disappear. One case involved a young Victorian couple from Frankston, uh, Deborah Everest, and James Gibson. So I think I got a picture. Yep, they're the top yeah, center top picture center there. Top picture, yep. Um, they had been missing since leaving Sydney for Confest near Albury on December 30th, 1989. For what? Confest? Confest. C-O-N-F-E-S-T? I don't know what Confest is. Maybe it's like, uh, what's the... Like Gen Con or Gen- Comic Con or... Yeah, or, or a concert thing like, uh... Oh, like a concert fest. Yeah, like we have here in the United States, like Lollapalooza, maybe. Oh, okay. I what, see what you're saying. One in California. What, what is that? Uh, whatever it's called. Burning Man. No, that's Arizona. Or that's not, no, that's uh, Fire Festival. No, <laughs> it's most it's, random. No, it's not. I can't even know what one in California is. Oh, well. Anyway. Yeah, that's not important. Anyway, we're yeah. talking about Australia. Yeah. Uh, mm-hmm. Simone Schmidl, age 21, from Germany, who uh, went missing, leaving Sydney for Melbourne on January 20th, 1991. Uh, similarly, a German couple, Gabor Nugebauer and Anja Habschild, ages 21 and age 20 respectively, had disappeared after leaving a King's Cross hostel for Mildura on December 26, 1991. And another case involving missing British backpackers, Caroline Clark, age 21, and Joanne Walters, age 22, who were last seen in King's Cross on April 18th, 1992. Where's King's Cross at? I don't know. I should put a map up on the. Yeah. Sorry. I mean, I can't do it for us, but here's a map showing where King's Cross is. Yeah. Uh, I'm curious. Yeah. Um, on September 19th, 1992, two runners discovered a concealed corpse while orienteering. Why are you giving me that fit? You know what orienteering is? It's like mapping. Yeah. Kind of like, I I kind of view it more like a, like geocaching is now yeah, kind of thing. Probably, yeah. Yeah. 
Um, anyway, they're in Belong, Belonglo, Belongelo. Yep, I'll go with it. Matt will correct Sounds us. good. The following morning, police discovered a second body 30 meters or 100 feet from the first one. Police quickly confirmed via dental records that the bodies were those of Clark and Walters. Walters had been stabbed 15 times, four times in the chest, once in the neck, and nine times in the back. That's uh, that's serious. Which they say would have paralyzed her where she was stabbed. Yeah. Uh, Clark had been shot 10 times in the head at the burial site, and police believe she had been used as target practice. Like set up to be a target. Yeah, yeah, I get it. Damn. Um, After a thorough search of the forest, investigators ruled out the possibility of further discoveries within Belonglo State Forest. So nothing sexual, just purely... Just crazy, yeah. Yeah. In October 1993, a local man searching for firewood discovered bones in a particularly remote section of the forest. He returned with police to the scene where two bodies were quickly discovered and later identified as Gibson and Everest. Wow. Uh, Gibson's skeleton found in a fetal position showed eight stab wounds. A large knife had cut through his upper spine, causing paralysis and stab wounds to his back and chest would have punctured his heart and lungs. So he was in a fetal position. He was basically just, he, he wasn't even fighting. He just, was just, he gave up. Yeah. That's what, it, this is what it sounds like. Yeah. Uh, Everest had been savagely beaten. Her skull was fractured in two places. Her jaw was broken, and there were knife marks on her forehead. Like, literally just... Yeah, yeah. Ooh. Mm. She had been stabbed once in the back. The presence of Gibson's body in Belonglo puzzled investigators, as his camera had previously been discovered on December 31st, 1989, four years earlier. Mm Mm-hmm and his backpack later on March 13th, 1990, by the side of the road at Galston Gorge in the northern Sydney suburbs, Okay, over 120 kilometers or 75 miles to the north of where he was where found. He found. Yeah. Slater's just taking his stuff and dumbing it. Right? Pretty much. Getting ready to get evidence. On... Um, On November 1st, 1993, another skeleton is found in a clearing along a fire trail in the forest during a police sweep. Mm. It was later identified as that of Schmidl. Simone. And bore at least eight stab wounds. Two had severed her spine and others would have punctured her heart and lungs. So this dude's like savage. She's a savage. Oh, yeah. Like, Like, this is like, I mean, like here you would think this type of stuff, that type of stabbing would be uh, some... The suspect knew the person. Or like romantic involvement, a lot yeah. of hatred kind yeah. of thing. Or denies sexually uh sexual relations or something. Right. Yeah. Yeah. This is they're intense attacks. Yeah. Like definitely. Yeah. Clothing found at the scene was not Schmidl's, but matched that of another missing backpacker. Oh. So there there's a body, then there's clothes that belong to a different body somewhere else. Yeah. Um wow. The clothes uh, mass- matched another missing backpacker, Habshield. The bodies of Habshield and Neuerbauer were then found on a nearby fire trail on November 4th, 1993, in shallow graves 50 meters or 160 feet apart from each other. Oh, so he, he actually buried them. I, I guess. Hmm. Oh, man. Habshield had been decapitated. Holy shit. And despite an extensive search, her skull has never been found. Wow. Uh, Neurbauer had been shot in the head six times. Damn. There was also... One kills kills you. Right. Like, I don't get the... Yeah, what's the... I mean, is it just the pure joy of doing it? I get... Yeah, like they're saying, like, they're almost like the target practice. Yeah. Um, There's also evidence that some of the victims did not die instantly from their injuries. Oh, God. So they suffered, it sounded like. Dear God. In response to the fines... On October 14th, 1993, Task Force Air, containing more than 20 detectives and analysts, was set up by the uh, NSW police. Uh, I'm guessing that's New South Wales police. Yeah. On November 5th, 1993, the New South Wales government increased the reward in relation to the Blanglo serial killings to $500,000. Wow. They got a big reward on this. Yes, they do. Well, uh, they want this stopped. Oh, well, 100%, yeah. You basically got a serial killer on your hands. Yeah, 100%. Uh, public warnings were also given. 
particularly aimed at international backpackers, to avoid hitchhiking along the Hume Highway. After developing their profile of the killer, the police faced an enormous volume of data from numerous sources. Investigators applied link analysis technology to roads and traffic authority vehicle records, gym memberships, oh. gun licensing, Ooh. and internal police reports. Okay. As a result, the list of suspects was progressively narrowed to a short list of 230. Okay. This still seems like a pretty big list, though. Yeah, yeah, it is. Um, then it's narrowed down to an even shorter list of 32. It's, no. That's better. Now, now that's get, a short list. Now we're getting somewhere. Right? There were similar aspects to all the murders. Each of the bodies had been dumped in remote bushland okay. and covered by a pyramid of sticks and ferns. So he's not really like burying them. He's just covering up. Covering up, so they yeah. People, which, which a lot of them typically do. Yeah. Forensic study determined that each had suffered multiple stab wounds to the torso, and many showed signs of sexual assault. Okay. So there was, so a, was a sexual sex, aspect yeah. to it. Okay. I figured there had to be. The killer, who is probably a local with a four-wheel drive, had evidently restrained and spent considerable time with the victims both during and after the murders. So he likes hanging out. I wonder if he had sex with them after. I don't want to know. No. I don't want to know. No, it's not worth it. Um, and police thought this because campsites were discovered close to the location of each body. Ah. So he's hanging out. Sure is. Which is oof. weird. Yeah. Weird. Um, matching twenty two caliber bullet shell casings and cartridge boxes from two weapons also linked the crime scenes. Okay. Speculation arose that the crimes were the work of several killers. Oh. Given that most of the victims had been attacked while as pairs. Because some of these are couples or two women walking together, so people are thinking there must be more than one person. Because one person can't overtake two people. Right. Um, also, they some of them had been killed in different ways. True. Yeah. yeah and yeah. buried separately. So they're thinking there may be more than one mm -hmm. out here. On November 13th, 1993, police received a call from Paul Onions. There's a name. This guy. Yeah. You ever heard that last name before? I have not heard of that name before. Yeah. Does well, it? Not, the, not him personally, but Onions. Oh, yeah. No, I've never heard anyone with the last name Onions. Yeah, that's different. He Is it weird, though? He kind of looks like an Onions. He does. He, do, he yeah. also looks like an American actor. Like, I feel like I've seen him in movies. Yeah. But it seems like everybody looks like somebody on the we show. We know. Yep. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So anyway, please receive a call from Paul. Okay. Mr. Onions here. Because Paul wants some information. Um, on January 25th, 1990, Onions had been backpacking in Australia. Okay. And while hitchhiking from Liverpool Station towards Mildura, had accepted a ride uh, south out of Casula from a man known only as Bill. Okay. Bill. Um, south of the town of Metagong and less than one kilometer from Belonglo State Forest, Bill stopped the car, pulled out a revolver and some ropes, telling Onions it was a robbery. Oh. Okay. Okay. At which point, Onions managed to flee while Bill pursued and shot at him. Oh, wow. So, so this, this is some pertinent information here. He's been zigzagging. He must have, been, he must have done like a Matrix yeah. thing or something. Oh, you're like ships do, zigzag. Right. Like running from an alligator type yep. thing? Yeah. Um, Onions flagged down Joanne Barry, a passing motorist, and together they sped off and described the assailant and his vehicle to the Boral police. Okay. So they got this dude named Bill. They have a pretty good description. Of what, I mean, this yeah. dude rode yeah, in the car with yeah. him and a description of the vehicle. Yeah. Okay. Pretty good. Uh, pretty good that he got away. Right. Yeah. On April 13th, 1994, detectives refound the note um, regarding Onion's call and sought the original report from Barrow Police, but it was missing. Fortunately, a constable had recorded details in her notebook. So there's kind of a little story here where he makes this report, and whoever writes the little note that he called loses the note. So there's yeah. this period of time that kind of goes by where no one really knows until someone, I guess, in a meeting was like, well, what about that guy yeah, that called? What about, about Paul? What happened right, to Paul? The guy with that weird last name. Yeah. Which is probably why they remembered. Probably. Yeah. Um, Onion's statement was corroborated by Barry, 
who had also contacted the investigation team along with the girlfriend of a man who worked with Ivan Malat, who thought he should be questioned over the case. Ivan. Hmm. That's, so, a, that's a sinister name. Yeah. Ivan Malott. Ivan. It is very like uh, yeah. like uh, evil, the bad guy in movies. Yeah. You know, what's yeah, the bad yeah. guy's name? It's Ivan. It's like, like a Vincent Price type thing. Right. Right. <laughs> okay. Oh my God, dude! So yeah, this, he, he's guilty. This he's guilty. <laughs> dude, look what he's what? wearing. Who wears shorts like that? Dude. Who wears jean shorts? Dude, I I used to have a pair. I mean, it was a thing, right? I'm not going <laughs> to say anymore. <laughs> no, just shake my head at you. Well, this is Ivan Malat. Yeah. Yes, he is wearing very short jean shorts. Yes, he is. Yeah, I mean, he's got some nice knee muscles. He's got some Daisy Dukes on. Um, and he's got like the trucker stash situation. But the, the stash looks uneven. It does. Doesn't it look like yeah. his left or right is real thick and long? Yeah, <laughs> and he's got like, like this left, little, like, little, like yeah. Yeah. sticking out of there? Yeah, like these like, like, like kids today that are weird. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So, anyway, on February 26, 1994, police surveillance of the Malott house at Cinnabar Street, Eaglevale, commenced. Okay. So, they got... So, they're at his house. They're at this dude's house, and they're seeing what he's doing. Because remember, he, what was it, a co-worker, said, eh, this guy's kind of yeah. creepy. My girlfriend. Should, and yeah. Yeah. All right. But his name's not Bill. It's Ivan. That's true. So I wonder where that comes yeah. into play. Hmm. Hmm. Um, police also had learned about Ivan here that he had recently sold his silver Nissan Patrol four-wheel drive shortly after the discovery of the bodies of Clark and Walter. I wonder what those look like. Uh, I will find a picture and put it up. I know it doesn't help us now. But yeah, I know. This is curious. A Nissan Patrol. It. Let me look. Oh, look it up. Nissan Patrol? I got Google. Okay, so it's like a... I mean, there's a 2024. I don't know. Like, so you don't know a year, but it's kind of like a... Well, this would have been at least no newer than a 94. It's a 24. I know, but look up... Do like 1993 Nissan Patrol. There's a there's a 2024 yeah, yeah, Nissan Patrol? Three, I don't know. Is it one of those vehicles like only sold in Australia or Europe or something and it's not oh, yeah, available? Exactly. Yeah, they're probably. Well, have you ever heard the name? No, I've never heard of it. Like a Bronco type situation? Yeah, basically it is. Okay, let's see. Oh, hold it up to the uh, your camera there. Oh, yeah. It, does, it looks like OJ's Bronco. Yeah. Okay. Wow. Man. It's a GQ T42 uh Rare factory auction. Interesting. Yeah. Okay. So basically, yeah, it is like a Land Rover or a Bronco. All right. So the bottom line is this matches the description Onions gives, right? This is the type of vehicle he was in. And now Ivan here, sell, as soon as bodies are found, he sells his. Yeah. Okay. I wish I would have bought it. Uh, police also confirmed that Malat had Ivan had not been working on any of the days of the attacks. Okay. So we got some suspicion building up here. And acquaintances of Ivan also told police about Malat's obsession with weapons. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Malat's brother, Bill. Oh! oh. oh here we go. <laughs> okay. Here's the Bill. Who often had his identity used by his brother for worker vehicle registrations. Here we go. Was questioned by investigators. Well, yeah, Onion said a dude named Bill picked yeah, me up in yeah, this there you go. Bronco looking yeah. thing. Um, when the connection between the Belonglo murders and Onion's experience was made, Onions flew to Australia to help with the investigation. Oh, good. So here's our hero, hero survivor yeah. coming to the rescue. That's right. On May 5th, 1994, Onions positively identified Malat as the man who picked him up and attempted to murder him. Well, I would think you would know. He would know. Going down, Ivan. Yep, you're, you're dead. You're done. You bastard. Dumbass. Malat was arrested at his home on May 22nd, 94. I hope he was wearing his jean shorts. <laughs> he was wearing this exact out. No, I don't know I that for so. sure, but. Yeah. Um, he's arrested on robbery and weapons charges related to the Onions attack after 50 police officers surrounded 50? the premises. Jesus. <laughs> what are we? Oh, Jesus. Crap. <laughs> including heavily armed officers from the Tactical Operations Unit. Wow. The search of Malat's home revealed various weapons, including a twenty-two caliber uh, rifle. Okay. And parts of a twenty-two caliber Ruger rifle. Okay. That matched the type used in the murders. Correct. Uh, a browning pistol, a bowie knife. Also uncovered was foreign currency. 
Which, he probably took off his victims. Right. Clothing, a tent, sleeping bags, camping equipment, and cameras belonging to several of the victims. victims. Well, he's got to have trophies. He's a serial killer, obviously. You, know, these, you got to keep a trophy. These guys are the dumbest. Mm-hmm. Um, Holmes belonging to his mother and five of his brothers were also searched at the same time by over 300 police. Holy shit. This was an operation. I know you do that here in the United States. No. Good God. The searches uncovered a total of 24 weapons, 250 kilograms of ammunition, and several more items belonging to the victims. Oh, gee, thanks, dude. Come put the shit at my house. Shit, Get me in trouble. So Malad appeared in court May 23rd. Are they, are they, I wonder if they're, wonder if they're, if they're allowed to have a weapon. Because in some countries, you're not allowed to. Well, I think, and Matt, I know you're listening. If you would yep. comment or anything. Yeah, let us else. know. Yeah, let us know. I, are, your, is, are the police normally armed in Australia, or is it kind of like the UK? Because I did find it interesting how it said members of the armed special forces unit yeah. of police or whatever. Yeah. So is it like is it kind of like London where normal normal cops normal bobbies bobbies don't aren't armed with firearms but there's like specialized units in case there's a situation let us know yeah and then our uh, citizens I mean are you as a citizen are you allowed to have guns I mean is there like a a licensing or something like we do here in the United States where if you got a license you, 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 know, you can carry a gun yeah well some states don't even require here well, there are some yeah, places well, you can have whatever the hell you want no well, one cares they're changing them. Well, I know, but... They're based it off the Constitution. Yeah. Anyway, go on. Sorry. <laughs> Let me interrupt okay. you. Um, a lot appeared in court on May 23rd, but he did not enter a plea. On May 31st, Malat was also charged with seven backpacker murders. Wow. Because originally they just got him for the attack on onions. Yes. Now they're hitting him with murders. murders. On June 28th, Malat sacked his defense lawyer, Marsden, <laughs> And sought legal aid to pay for his defense. He must not have liked his lawyer. Yeah, he must have liked where he was going. Meanwhile, brothers Richard and Walter were tried in relation to weapons, drug, and stolen items found on their properties. Wow. So he did get his brothers in some shit. Sure did. Wow. Um, A committal hearing for Malat regarding the murders began on um, October 24th and lasted until December 12th, during which over 200 witnesses appeared. (sighs) Based on the evidence... At the beginning of February 1995, Malat was remanded in custody until June that same year. On March 26, 1996, the trial opened at the New South Wales Supreme Court and was prosecuted by Mark Tedeschi. That sounds familiar. Tedeschi? Tedeschi. Hmm. His defense argued that in spite of the evidence, there was no non-circumstantial proof that Malat was guilty and attempted to shift the blame to other members of his family, particularly Richard. Okay. God, I would be pissed if my brother did some shit yeah. and they're like, yeah. his defense is that it's me. Yeah. Yeah. I think uh, there goes that brotherhood. Right. Yeah. But to be fair, there really is nothing but circumstantial. Yeah. This is, ep- yeah. Yeah. You know, right. and yeah. I know I'm looking at it through the lens of like a U.S. court system type thing, but. And circumstantial evidence cases are hard to prove. Like, you got enough to probably convict him of the attack on Onions, because yeah. Onions is a witness that says, that's the guy. Yeah, but he's not going to get a whole lot of time for that. Right. But these backpacker murders, it's just like, okay, well, he attacked Onions in a similar way. And he's, he's got all their stuff, all these, all the stuff. That see, they, that I think is pretty damning, though. How do you explain that you have victims' personal property in your possession? I mean, you could. there's ways you could say, I was just out, out camping in the woods, and I, I came across this camera. Well, that's see, you would make a good defense lawyer. Yeah, yeah. I, yeah, I thought that. about that. It's always that. I mean, there's there's ways. I guess if he's got a good attorney. Yeah, true. So during the trial, 145 witnesses take the stand, including members of the Malat family, um, who provided alibis. And on June 18th, Malat himself took the stand. God, that's risky. That is. Um, on July 27th, 1996, after 18 weeks of testimony, <laughs> that's a long trial, a jury found Malat guilty of the murders. He was given a life sentence on each count without the possibility of parole. He was also convicted of the attempted murder, false imprisonment, and robbery of onions. Okay. Yeah. Look at this goober now. 
Wow. Look at that face. God, dude. Looks like a, I don't know. He looks like it. Kind of reminds me of, uh, he changed a lot like uh, old. Uh, I know what you're talking. Yeah, one of our previous. Yeah. Yeah. It, uh, it does it. Like once you're caught and you know that prison time, prison, man, prison changes you. Yeah. I mean, I guess their prisons are hard just like ours. Yeah. Hmm. Huh. So here's what's interesting. Police maintain that Malak could have been involved in even more attacks or murders than the seven for which he was convicted. Oh. Based on uh, MO, modus operandi, similarities. Correct. E- examples include uh, Karen Rowland, age 20, who disappeared in 1971 and found it in the Fairbrain Pine Plantation in 71. You got Peter Letcher, 18. He was went missing in November of 87, found in the Genelin State Forest in 1988. Uh, Diane Penachio, age 29, disappeared in September of 91, found in the Talaganda State Forest in November 91. Further, given the possibility of an accomplice, the murder cases were kept open. As I thought, there might be a possibility there's another person. On July 18th, 2005, Malat's former lawyer, Marsden, made a deathbed statement. So the lawyer's dying. The lawyer makes a deathbed statement in which he claims that Malat had been assisted by his sister, Shirley Swer, Sorer, S-O-I-R-E, okay. in the killings of the two British backpackers. Oh. But she is now pa- she passed in 2003. So oh. she's not around it because this is 05. Yeah, the attorney. So yeah nothing you do at this point. In 2001, Malat was ordered to give evidence at an inquest into the disappearances in the Newcastle area of three other female backpackers. Uh, Leanne Goodall, age 20, um, Robin Hickel, I'm sorry, Hickey, Hickey. age 18, and Amanda Robinson. um, All of them disappeared between 78 and 79. Okay. Um, A related cold case is that of Gordana Kortevsky, age 16. Wow. Who disappeared in 1994. Although Malat was working in the area at the time of the crimes, no case has been brought against him due to lack of evidence. But they think this is probably the guy. Yeah. Similar inquiries were launched in 2003 in relation to the disappearance of two nurses. And again in 2005 relating to the disappearance of hitchhiker Annette Briffa. But no charges were laid out. So I'm really interested to see what this Malat was ordered to give evidence at an inquest. Is this like, do they bring him in and just say like, we are ordering you to basically tell us what happened? Yeah. And then, I mean, what happened? He can just be like, no. Yeah. Or, I don't know what you're talking, I don't know what you're talking about. about. Yeah. Interesting. Uh, it's interesting that he doesn't have any, uh, I mean, if he would have committed those murders, do you think he would have had something of, of theirs? He kept stuff of the other people's. Right. So why wouldn't he, you know what I mean? Unless those were like first, those were the trial runs. Trial runs, true. Or the first ones, and then once he got into it, was like, I want to start keeping Trinkets now. Could be, could be, yeah. You know, you never know what these crazy asshats are thinking. You're right. Um, In a 2010 media interview, Onions, our main man, Onions, described how he accepted but did not use a $200,000 reward granted for his part in the conviction of Malat. Why would you turn it down? I don't know. Well, he said he accepted it but did not use. So what does that mean? It's in a savings account? Or maybe maybe he gave it to charity? I guess. I probably, this is why we're morons. I run into stuff like that when I'm putting these episodes together. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I thought when I read that the first time, oh, I wonder where it went or what it, but then I never researched it. I should have. My apologies. Yeah, Matt I might know. He may, he may know. Maybe Matt know. Yeah. I feel like Matt's going to correct us on a lot of shit. Probably. Shape probably have a feeling. Yeah, 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 yeah. And, I'm for, and as, since we've asked him a lot of questions, you know, having somebody from a different country, I mean, it's just, yeah. just curious about some stuff. Uh, here's another crit. Look at this. Dude. He's such a goober, man. Yeah. Like, <laughs> God, man. God, what a weirdo. Like, mm. yeah. Okay. I want one of those police patches. I like that. That's cool. So in 2004, Malat does an interview on Australian Story. I don't know what that is, if that's a paper it's or a maybe, show. Maybe it's like Dateline or 2020. Could be. But he denied that any of his family had been involved in the seven murders. Oh, of course. Of course he does. Yeah. On January 26, 2009, Malat cut off his little finger with a plastic knife with the intention of mailing it to the High Court of Australia to force an appeal. He cut off Dude, that's his a pinky balls. with a plastic knife. That hurt. 
Can you imagine what that took? It had to hurt. Oh my God. What? What do they did? Uh, <laughs> did they melt him back? Well, he was taken to Goldburn Base Hospital under high security. However, on January 27th, Malat was returned to prison after doctors decided surgery was not possible. Malat had previously harmed himself in 2001 when he swallowed razor blades. Jesus <laughs> Christ, man. Oh, wait, hang on. That's not, the, that's not the end of the sentence. Hang on. Oh, God. When he swallowed razor blades, staples. Oh, my God. And other metal objects. Could you imagine shitting that out? <laughs> Oh my God, no, I don't want to. You'd be bleeding. Oh, my God. Whew. In May 2011, he went on nine-day hunger strike. Oh, God. Losing 25 kilograms in an unsuccessful attempt to be given a PlayStation. Dear God. <laughs> if I it's, want a PlayStation. I'm not going to eat till I get one. If it's not in the commissary books, bud, you don't get it. Right. In May 2019, Malotz transferred to the Prince of Wales Hospital in Randwick and was subsequently diagnosed with terminal esophageal cancer. Yeah, Esophagus. yeah. Probably the razor police didn't know. Right. Following his treatment, he was transferred to the Long Bay Correctional Center to continue his custodial sentences. On August 9th, 2019, a terminally ill Malotz was moved to a secure treatment unit located at the Prince of Wales Hospital following the loss of 20 kilograms in previous weeks. He was also exhibiting a high temperature. His status, however, was reported as non-life-threatening. Too bad. On October 27, 2019, however, Malat died from Thanks esophagus life. and stomach cancer. Good. 4.07 a.m. within Good. the hospital wing at Long Bay Correctional Center. I hope he suffered. He, I hope he was suffering. Oh, yeah. He was... Um, he was 74 years old. I hope he was miserable, suffered bad. I hope it was, I hope it was horrible for him. Oh, and if you thought that was the end of the story, just wait. <laughs> oh, I want one of those police patches. It is a cool patch. It's a cool patch. Hmm. Yeah. Prior to his death, oh God, M Malat wrote a letter to his family. Oh. And he was requesting that his funeral be paid for by the New South Wales government. I'm sure they will. I didn't know you could do such a thing. I didn't know I could write a letter to my family and say, hey, make sure the government pays, pays. for. Yeah. Well, yeah, they're going to they'll put you in the prison cemetery. Well, the request was denied. Okay. By the New South Wales Corrections Minister, Anthony Roberts. Good. Instead, his body was cremated with the full reimbursement of costs to be paid from his prison account. It was like his commissary. Yeah. Yeah. Um, <laughs> In his final days, New South Wales police said in a statement that their officers visited Malat eight times in prison and in hospital in an attempt to elicit a confession from him. And he never gave up. So he basically, they when they knew he was dying on his last leg, Hope. I get it. Make Hope one it. more. Hey, man. And maybe at that point he's like, yeah, you, I'll, I'll talk. You're going to be passing. Just let us know what happens so we can tell the families and there can be closure. I mean, I get why they did it. However, Malat did not confess. I didn't think he would. Uh, quote, various strategies were deployed on each occasion, including different combinations of detectives and utilizing recorded interviews with victims' families as an investigative technique. Um, the statement also said no further information was received or provided to police during the interactions. Although Malat died never having officially confessed, he is said to have previously admitted to his mother, with whom he had a close relationship, that he was responsible for the backpacker murders. Yeah. What crazy story, dude. What if they record prison calls? What if he ever, you know what I mean? To, well, they, I think if they did and he told his mom or something over the phone, they would have had that. And, yeah. You know, I don't know. I'm just curious. What a goober crazy dude. Yep. That's nuts. Thanks, Matt. Yeah, thanks, Matt. Yeah, that's, yeah. that's a cool story. Yeah, a cool story. Hopefully you did it justice and I didn't mispronounce too many. Belongolo? Belongolo? Well, if, if there are mistakes, I need a critique because I'm glad it was you, not me. Oh, yeah, because I'm going to end up on the error board a lot, I think. Yeah. We'll wait and see what the comments are like. Mm. We'll see. We'll see. Well, what do you think? Should we play the Wheel of Death? Hey! hey! Wheel of Death. Let's go. All right. I'm going to grab the Bucket of Doom. Uh-oh. Maybe if I can see where I'm sticking my hand. All right, here is the Bucket of Doom. Why don't you pick this time? You want me to pick? Yeah. Okay. Um, real quick, 
If you would like to play the Wheel of Death, we'll put a QR code up on the screen, or you can go to twomurdermorons.com slash Wheel of Death. There's a simple sign-up form. Get your name in the bucket, and you'll see what's about to happen if you uh, get drawn, yeah. right? Yeah. All right. Ready? Let's go. Oh, come on, man. Reach in there. Come on. Come on. Oh, God, I got it. Hang on. Tiffany. Okay. Okay. <laughs> Mike's like, all right, let's all right, do let's it. Go. All right, we'll get Come Tiffany. Uh, we'll get Tiffany on the line and play the wheel of death. Get her on. Let's go. There's Tiffany. Hey, Hi. how's it How going? It's good. How are you? Doing good. Thank you for asking. Where are you calling from today, Tiffany? Um, I'm in Utah, in Salt Lake. Utah. Utah. Ooh, I like Utah. Ooh, did you say Park City? No, Salt Lake. We're you know Salt Lake City. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. We're in the Mormon capital, so. Gotcha. It's still a beautiful area, though, right? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. it is. Unless it's yeah. yucky and snowy, but mostly it's pretty. Yeah. I would take the snow. Would you? <laughs> I think so. Oh, yeah. For that beauty? Hell yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. I can trade that in. Yeah, yeah. Definitely. Definitely. Well, Tiffany, thank you so much for being a fan and signing up to play the Wheel of Death. You ready to play? I am. I'm excited. Okay. For those that are watching the show for the first time that don't know how this works, this here is our beautiful Wheel of Death. There are a couple spaces on there that say death, which means you wouldn't win anything. Uh, but other spaces include a hoodie, free buy me a coffee memberships, gift cards to our merch shop, hats, t-shirts, and the famous Wheel of Death. I survived the Wheel of Death t-shirt yep. that everybody wants. Is yep. that oh heck is, yeah. there any, is there anything specific that you're shooting for? Uh, I'd like a hoodie. A hoodie? Ah, a hoodie. No. Okay. Oh yeah. Utah, snowy mountains. Utah, I, get snow mountains. Yeah. I get it. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. For All sure. right, so you get to choose. Would you like me or would you like Mike to spin the wheel for you? Hmm, I think I'll have Mike spin. Okay. Oh, man, obviously she hasn't watched much. I like this. <laughs> <laughs> he doesn't have the best uh, winning streak. Shut up. This will be the breaker, maybe. Okay, it might be. <laughs> All right, let's go for it. All right, here we go. Spin away, Mike. Spin it good. There we go. Hmm. Oh, nice spin, man. How is that? It's like, oh, oh. $25, $25 gift card. card. That goes for Yay! the... Okay. Your hoodie. Yeah, you're on your way to a hoodie with that one. There you go. Awesome. Thank you guys so much. Yeah, hey, thank, yeah. thank you. For, yeah, yeah. Thanks for being a fan and signing up to play the Wheel of Death. Awesome. You guys are awesome. I love watching you guys. Okay, well, there we go. I know. Another winner. Another winner. Congrats. Yeah, hey, she picked she, me. Uh, she And you won something. I know. It's $25. You're coming back, dude. I'm back. You are coming I'm back. back, people. I'm back. Yeah. Back, back, back. Can you tell he really wants to get picked more? All, to you, spin nay, it? all you naysayers. You, you did have a dry spell there for a I little bit. You weren't, you weren't hitting much. Yeah. But uh, thanks again, Tiffany, for calling in and playing with us. Hopefully, what's she going to do? Is she going to use that $25 hoodie. gift card towards a hoodie? hoodie? Yep. Yeah. Well, she's in Utah. Yeah. I, I, wonder, hoodie too. I wonder what it is there right now. I mean, I know it gets cold. It's summer. I just don't know how. I don't know. No. No. We'll see. Maybe we'll just have to take a tour out there sometime. I, we, I mean, I've been out there. I don't remember what time of year it was, but yeah. like I said, beautiful. Flew in the airport. That's it. But that's it? Well, it was the military. Flew that, in the is that the airport you can still smoke in? Mm, I don't know. I think it I think it might be. Is it? No. Mm. But when back then, I didn't know. Well, that's fine. You could smoke it all over. No, wait. Couldn't. You had to go outside. Yeah. But I think, I think Salt Lake has the little smoking rooms oh, that you they? step into. Okay. Probably not. I think I went through there like eight, ten years ago, and there were they were still there. Now in the eighties, you could you could even still smoke on a plane. You'd I remember probably, that. You probably smoke weed on a plane back in the eighties. Yeah, if if there was allowed, I guess <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. I flew to, I flew to California on a plane, and everyone was smoking. Yeah, yeah. Well, if you enjoyed this episode, you like to support the show, head on over to buymeacoffee.com slash two mirror morons. There, you can simply buy Mike and I a coffee with a one time donation. Uh, donation. Or you can sign up to be a member and get uh, exclusive benefits such as bonus episodes. Yep. So if you weren't aware, we do a bonus episode every other Friday. Um, That's right. Only our members at all levels and get then, that. And then at the end of our season, what do we do while our breaks? We record. Oh, yeah. Good point. I'm glad you brought that up. I almost forgot to mention it. Yeah. So, um, again, next Wednesday is our season finale, which is our first ever live. Yep. But then we kind of take a little break, like it's like a little four to five week break between seasons just to let the brains chill out a little bit. Yeah. But for our members, we don't stop. Correct. They continue getting those bonus episodes. So mm -hmm. if you know you just cannot manage sitting at home without watching our show. Yeah, yeah. Which I'm sure there's probably everybody's like that. Right. Yeah. 
You can sign up to be a member. A little is three bucks a month. Three bucks a month. You'll, three bucks. You'll get those bonus episodes yeah. during our break. Yeah, three bucks. That's not nothing. That's that's true. How else can they support the show, Mike? You know the merch. answer. Merch. 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 Two Murder Morons merch store, which I noticed neither of us are wearing. Well, I guess I, this is available. I don't know who would buy a. I always forget the damn hat. Yes, the hat is on there, too. Hat. Got the hat. I, I support that everywhere now. But yeah. Hat, hat, hat. Hell I never, yeah. I used to never wear a hat. I just got a comment. I was wearing, um, actually, I think it, the, I have the the blue shirt on the right there. I have it in black. It yeah. just has the name really big. Mm-hmm. Uh, I was in Costco. Random Costco worker was like, started laughing. was like, man, I had to read that twice because I didn't know what I was reading. But he's like, I'll have to check it out. So there it does go. help us like promote too. Like you'll run into people who ask yeah, you about it. It's just like when I was with uh, my wife at the doctor's office. And that doctor was like, hey, yeah. Or, well, a nurse practitioner was like, I'll start checking you guys out. See, there you go. You're a walking billboard type exactly. situation. That's, that's the thing. That's and the, you can be too. Yeah. So click the QR code on your screen or just head to tumorremorons.com slash merch. To see what we have to offer. Yep. It's nice stuff. Oh, yeah. There's some it's quality. Cool, there's cool stuff. It's good stuff. Yeah. Yeah. And we're, catching, we're coming around the holidays, too, people. Oh, Christmas time. Yeah. Yeah. I think everybody out there would like a Two Murder Morons t shirt, oh. sweatshirt, hoodie, Hell yeah. something. Yeah. Hell yeah. yeah. There's also some good stuff on there that could be stocking stuffers. Yep. There's true. Yeah. Yep. I don't know. Just check out our website in general. I really, yeah. We worked hard on that website. And we I got a Facebook cool. account, too. Hell yeah. yeah. Oh, which we didn't mention. If you're yeah. a member, you get access to the private yeah. group where private we group chat we with chat. people. And yeah. Yeah. There you go. There. See, man, there's all kinds of stuff out there. Jump on board. Be a member. Come on. Choo-choo. Come join us. Join us on this uh, crazy adventure of ours. Join the train. Yep. Um, real quick, we got to give credit where credit is due. Um, I read from and researched the Wikipedia uh, article. Okay. If I can say that word right, Wikipedia. Um, on the Backpacker Murders, as well as Ivan Malat. So if you want to check out that article, it is in the description below. Yep. And again, that was uh, that story was provided by Matt out of Australia. And like we always say, if you got one you'd like us to do, submit it. Yeah, please submit. If you This is proof positive that we read the comments. Yeah. And if you make a suggestion, we will look into that story. And if we think it's a good story like this one, we'll, we'll do an episode we'll do it. on it. Yeah. Awesome. Well, guys, we're excited to see you next week on the live. Yes. Hopefully, uh, Mike will show up. I'll be there. I uh, plan to. <laughs> it's on my calendar. So we'll see you guys all next Wednesday for the live. Thanks for tuning in. Thanks for tuning in. We'll see you next week. <laughs> see you next week, guys. See ya. <laughs>